Hi, uh, another tutorial. This one's how to repair, or a rough guide on how to repair Mercury and I believe Skytronic uh, soft start inverters. Although the picture there is showing a um, uh, 600 watt, the, the one I've actually fixed is a 1500 watt. Uh, there's common faults on them. Uh, this guide might, might help you. Uh, now, I'm normally overrun on the time, so I've actually set my uh, clock. Uh, which is shown in some of the other projects. Uh, have I set it at the right time? So I've got four, eight, so if I think one more minute. Right, turn the, turn the alarm on. That's a, uh, I think, I think I, yeah, I've demonstrated this scrolling text in one of the other videos. Uh, have a look if you're into pick micros. Right, that's going to go for nine minutes time. Right, soft start inverters. Common falls with 1500. I've got a scope there, I'll show you in a minute. 1500 and uh, 2000 watts, 2500 watts. These are sort of baby 1000 watt and 1500, just a four transformers. If I make sure you're in focus there. Right, one of the common faults, if you haven't blown it up and you haven't got big holes in the FET, one of the common faults is this. Um, this little board here, hopefully you can see that in the video, just make it bigger if you can't. That little board is the PWM, does the uh, PWM for the FETs which are un underneath, uh, well two here, FETs underneath to produce your 240 volts AC. I'm just trying to lock this camera off. These four get the 12 or 24 volt, sorry, 12 or 24 volt DC, use these eight FETs, switching through these four transformers to produce 300 volts, rectified and, uh, rectified and stored in the, or smoothed in these three caps. There's 300 volts DC, so don't touch them for five, 10 minutes, otherwise you will get a nasty bite. This little PWM board here runs off 12 volts. Um, a common fault with these Mercury and what was the other make Skytronic inverters with this style is under this transformer there's four little uh, signal diodes or like four one four eights. So if I move the camera, I come into this one. Hopefully you'll be able to see it. If I tip this board up, four little diodes just there. Can you see that? Hopefully you can, hopefully it's not out of focus. Uh, these four diodes and this smoothing cap uh, rectifies the power of one of these transformers, the one, well the one that sits here obviously, rectifies a small voltage and feeds through some resistors down here this board. Uh, roughly 12 volts and it's less than, about, it's about 10 milliamps it supplies. So if you start overdriving the output, everything starts drawing more current, one of the first things to fail is either a little 10 or 100 ohm resistor down here. Can, hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to hit this. I wish that this camera is autofocus. But it's not. There's a, a 10 ohm resistor and a 100 ohm resistor. Power comes through there, runs to this PWM board, runs these two FETs, and oh, this one's blown up. There's eight, six or eight underneath. Um, so a common thing, yeah, if the FETs aren't blown up, uh, check the continuity of these, these diodes. You, you don't have to take the transformer out. Just find the pins on the back and just put your meter across them on diode test. If you're not familiar with diode test, you shouldn't be looking at inverters or trying to repair inverters. Uh, this one's stripped down ready. Um, yeah, four little gaps there you'll see. That's the four diodes. Put your meter across and diode test. If one of them is short circuit, that's it, take the transformer out. Or you can just unsolder and pick them out with some tweezers, so long as you're confident you've got all the parts out. You then measure 12 volts. Let me get something thinner. 12 volts on this track here goes through the is it 10 or 100 ohm resistor comes around to the PWM board uh, and you get your output uh, common sign if you're running off a power supply which I am 
you'll get, well, if it's 12 or 24 volt, the inverter side switching the power, creating your 300 volts, this inverter section here will be drawing about 0.8 of an amp. And a good inverter, when it's actually producing 240 volts AC with no load, it actually synchronizes here and reduces the current through these. These sort of turn hard on at startup and then go to like a, an idle, sort of free run, low synchronized, which I'll show you on the scope. I'm trying to get everything in here without running out of time. Focus that. Well, what I'll do, this one connected to just a, a bench power supply. Oh, in fact, I thought the transformers were that's, uh, running at the moment. If I lock that. So it's locked and it's sort of like phase lock loop type thing. It's uh, synchronised to the output, so they're sort of free running. You get your sine wave there and some synchronisation pulses. That's free running. When you actually turn it off and back on again, oh, I've locked it. Right, what's the signal as I turn it on? No, I didn't catch it in time. Turn it back off again. I need three pairs of hands here. Ah, oh, still didn't catch it. Well, hopefully you'll see the signal there. That, that square wave, that's these four coils, four transformers, switch mode powers by turning hard on. They turn hard on wait for the uh, output, the, one of the IC synchronizes and then they go like to an idle <coughs> excuse me I'm not going to be able to catch this uh, nearly caught it uh, sort of square wave and what, what will happen is the bench power supply uh, or an, an ammeter in series with your battery it will be drawing about 0.8, 0.9 uh, of an amp switch on uh, when it senses the output, it all turns down and starts drawing about one or two hundred milliamps offload. Um, so I think that's about it. I'm running out of time. I've got a minute or so to spare. Um, four dies under here do the rectification. But yeah, as I say, the important thing, the reason for this video is those four little diodes there. So get you a good shot. If you don't know they're there, you're not necessarily going to look for them. Hopefully you can see that, see the four diodes. Uh, it's something to bear in mind when checking these. Um, obviously if there's FETs with big holes in, like these down here, then it's obvious you've got a problem. You might want to look at getting a second hand one off a big auction site, because you'd be looking at £20-£30 to replace them all. I can't seem to get this camera to focus. These little signal diodes next to it. Um, I think that's about it. I'm, I probably missed something as I'm rushing, but uh, yeah, something to watch out for. These, um, that board I've shown you there, I've not seen it. I've repaired quite a few of these inverters. This coil, sorry, this coil that supplies this board has got a separate winding, two tiny little wires just down here in the corner. Uh, they must pay some, I don't know, Taiwanese, Korean person to sort these transformers out. This transformer is particular to that area of the board, not found anywhere else. So you can't use one of the others. That's my alarm clock going. So, um, yeah, this inverter, this coil was blown up because of a short circuit on the track. Uh, from brand new, it's never worked in its life, uh, burnt this transformer. Anyway, that's it, gotta go, thank you very much.